Minster Wildcats and the Crestview Knights. I'm Dave Canapi. It's my privilege to bring you tonight's game. Minster's the number two seed here at the district. They're 17 and nine overall. They were five and four in the MAC. They advance in the sectional final by beating Lincoln View four to nothing behind Josh Nixon's 13 strikeout three hit performance on the mound. Uh, they are coached by Coach Mike Wiss in their 20s in his 22nd year. Wildcats have struggled a bit down the stretch. They've only won four of their last nine games. Crestview Knights, number six seed, 13 and seven overall, six and two which was good for third in the Northwest Conference. Uh, they had to play two games in the sectional. They beat Marion Local 5 to nothing Saturday the 7th, and then last Wednesday they beat Delta St. John 1 to nothing. Colby Clifton for, Del for Crestview pitched complete games in both of them, been a dominant pitcher uh, through this tournament all year. We'll go to his stats when we uh, start with the game. and They are coached by the veteran head coach, uh, Jim Wharton, who's in his 33rd year. So two veteran coaches, two teams that know each other quite well. It should be a good game here in the district. And the winner of this game will play Fort Recovery. We'll be right back with the starting lineups here on NK Telco Sports. You owe it to yourself twice a year at checkup at Minster Dental Care. Our specialized doctors, Jim Overman, Jim Myring, Sean Sharp, and Philip Slonkowski are ready to give you the smile you've always dreamed of at any stage of your life. Pediatric, orthodontic, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry are just a few of the services offered. Our latest advancements include Seric Dentistry that allows us to create and deliver a crown in one convenient visit. We're located on State Route 66 in Minster, 419-628-3380 to schedule your appointment today. You owe it to yourself. NK Telco Sports, Ohio's leading sports broadcasting company, is dedicated to sports coverage, filming over 120 collegiate and high school sporting events that bring quality content and excellent sportsmanship to the big screen. Team up with us as an NK Telco sponsor and receive many benefits, commercials that will be seen by thousands of viewers, multiple name mentions, live web ads, monthly bill stuffers, and discounted network ad insertion spots. Packages are available for any budget. Contact us today. You see the Minster Wildcats take the field. They are taking on the Crestview Knights here in district semifinal action. While we got a minute, let's talk about our keys to the game brought to you by Bud's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Salina, where the dealer makes a difference. Keys for Minster tonight. First of all, they need to hit the ball. They've been struggling uh, of late with their overall offense, especially some against some of the good pitchers in the area. The other thing that they need to be is good fundamental defense. They need to defend the bunt, which Crestview will do a lot. Uh, they need to handle any steal plays, just in general play a good fundamental defense. Those are your keys to the game. For Minster, we'll have Crestview as they take the field. Pitcher for tonight for Minster, Josh Nixon, a senior, four-year varsity player on the baseball team, a 3-3 three and three record on the mound this season, 268 ERA in 47 innings of pitching. 68 strikeouts. He's only had 16 walks, so over a 4 to 1 ratio strikeouts to walks. He's coming off a, uh, in the semifinal game, or I should say the sectional final, he beat Lincoln View 4 to 0. Nixon pitched a three hitter, and he struck out 13 strikeouts, struck out 13 batters in six innings of work. The shortstop Peter Falk finished out the game in the seventh inning. So we're getting ready to play. Should be a good game here. The winner to play Fort Recovery, who defeated St. Henry 2-0. That game will be on Saturday. And now we have a game to decide, led off by Crestview, their center fielder, Jordan Miller. One of two seniors in this lineup. It's 246. Beautiful day for baseball here at Veterans Field at Coldwater, Ohio. Nixon looking to the sign for Stubbs. Pitch, and there's a shot into left field. It's tailing, and that will be foul. Left fielder Jared Hilsman retrieves it in. Checking the lineup also in center field, Bryce Schmeese, and right field, John Niemeyer. And at first base, Brett Holscher, second base, Alex Lemkel. Shortstop, Peter Falk. Third baseman, Isaac Schmeese. Pitcher is Josh Nixon, and the catcher is Ben Stubbs. Miller 0 1 here, 246. Bad average, 407 on base percentage. And a nice curveball there by Nixon. He's ahead of the count, 0 and 2. Winding the pitch, and it 
Miller did a nice job of just keeping alive here. Was able to waste that one. Miller, one of two seniors on this lineup. Behind him, on the X circle, the pitcher Colby Clifton is next. Overall, two seniors, five juniors, and one sophomore and one freshman in the lineup for Coach Jim Wharton. Pitching, there's a ground ball, a little number to Nixon. Steps and throws to first to Holscher. First batter is retired for the Knights. Stepping in for the Knights, the pitcher, Colby Clifton. 338 batter. Senior has 13 RBIs, also 11 stolen bases. One of the three lefties in the lineup. First pitch, a curveball. Inside corner, strike one. Nixon is not afraid to throw curveballs at any point in the count. Threw a lot of curveballs against Lincoln View in the win in the sectional final. Another curveball is knocked away down the left field line. Once again, just like he did against Miller, 0-2. He's 0-2 on Clifton. Minster 17-9 on the season. Ranked number 13 in the state this year. They were 5-4 in the MAC. Wind by Nixon. There's a curveball hit into left center field. Jared Hillsman is under it for the second out. So two up, two down. Bring up one of their better hitters, sophomore third baseman, Caden Hurlis. 364 batter, 16 RBIs. One of their keys to their lineup is a couple of their big hitters is in the middle. First pitch to Hurlis that goes outside. Crestview 13 and seven on this season. They're six and two in the Northwest Conference which was good for third place. And there's a curveball in the dirt. They finished third behind Spencerville and Paulding, who tied the seven and one records. Spencerville knocked off Paulding last night to, for the tie in the Northwest Conference. 2-0 oh now on Hurlis. Pitch is outside 3-0. and oh. So Nixon, after he won 0-2 oh on the first two batters, now 3-0 and oh on Hurlis. Cleanup batter is Zachariah Zimmerman on deck. There's a strike down the middle of the plate. Three and one. Nixon with the line. Fastball. Isaac Schmees in the third, all the way across the diamond. Up three, up three, down into the crest few nights. Good start for the pitcher, Josh Nixon. After the first inning, no runs for Crestview. Minster coming to bat here on NK Toko Sports. Innovation, it's all around us. NK Telco developed a fiber network in our communities over 10 years ago when the competitors were only thinking about it. Increasing bandwidth to make it convenient for the whole family to enjoy online entertainment and gaming. With our IPTV solution, you can enjoy over 80 HD channels, providing quality TV and movies for the whole family, and even take them on the go with our Watch TV Everywhere app. All this from a company that believes in local customer service from people you know and trust. NK Telco, providing services that bring value to your everyday life. Hello? Anybody home? This bed's too soft. This bed's too hard. That one, it's from Francis Furniture. I like it. Find your just right at Francis Furniture. Crestview goes down in order in the top of the first. The Knights take the field. Let's look at our keys to the game. Once again, brought to you by Bud's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Salina for the Crestview Knights. Number one, they're middle of the order. They need the three and four hitters, Hurlis and Zimmerman. Uh, they both have pretty good pop. They need to perform and get some big hits for the Knights. And then the other thing Crestview, I think, is get a good early lead. Uh, they have Clifton on the mound. Get an early lead against Minster, who struggled a bit hitting. That puts a lot of pressure on, a, on the Minster offense. So again, the keys to the game there brought to you by Bud's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Salina, in Salina where the dealer makes a difference. Pitcher for Crestview, Colby Clifton. Southpaw, senior, five and one record. He also has a save, a .72 ERA in 39 innings of pitching, 
52 strikeouts, only 14 walks. So similar to similar to Nixon, almost a four to one ratio strikeouts to walks. He came off. He's pitched both tournament games so far. He threw a three hitter against Marion in the opener, beat him five to nothing. He had 12 strikeouts in that game. And then he pitched a one nothing one hitter against Delphus St. John, only 77 pitches in that game. So he's a experienced senior. Stepping to the plate for the Wildcats. One of their seniors, Peter Falk. Falk first team all MAC steps in. Ball is low. Falk a 381 batting average, 548 on base percentage. Very good. And he also has stole 15 bases on the season. Second pitch is high. So Hurlis was low on the check that lift. Clifton was high low on the first, high on the second. Southpaw looks into his catcher, Gerardo. Pitch into the dirt, 3-0. and On deck at Falkwood, on deck will be Brett Holster, another senior first baseman. A 3-0 count here on Peter Falk. Clifton with the rind. Pitch, that is strike on the outside corner. Behind the plate, is Michael Reinhardt is the umpire. Third base is Pat Houseworth. First base is Bob Grubal. Pitch is inside and walk. Peter Falk draws the walk. Again, he's stolen 15 on the season. We'll keep an eye on that. Now Brett Holscher, the first baseman senior, hitting 338 on the season, 13 RBIs. Clifton has a pretty good mood. Pretty good move. Always an evangel with here the south ball. He throws over. He's got Falk picks off. In a rundown. Falk tries to get back, and he does get back. They took too long to throw it there. I believe the second baseman or the shortstop there for Crestview took too long, and Falk able to get back. There is a huge break there by the Wildcats as Falk able to slide back. Underneath the tag, so nothing hurt there on the play. Imagine he'll tone down a little bit on his aggressiveness here. No pitch so far to Holscher. He'll throw over to Falk. This time Falk back easily. There's over the first baseman, Brant Richardson. Second baseman is Zach Zimmerman. Shortstop is Spencer Ralston. Third baseman is Caden Hurlis. And there's... Falk is gone. A bunt is too high, and the first baseman catches a double off Falk. They had the bump play on there. Holscher could not get it down. He popped it up. The first baseman, Richardson, catches it. He easily doubles off Falk, who was running on the play so quickly. A double play does in the Wildcats there. So two on, nobody on is Josh Nixon. The pitcher up with two outs and nobody on. First pitch is outside. And that was on a bump play. The Knights able to get a double play. Clifton to Nixon. There's a pop fly. Left field tailing away from the left fielder. Catch made there by Niddle for the third out. So the Wildcats get their leadoff batter on. But he's doubled off, and that ends the inning. We're play one complete, no score here on NK Toko Sports. Here at TLC, we expanded our business, so we wanted the security of knowing exactly where all the kids are and what's going on in each of the rooms. We chose Fowler's because we've done all our televisions with them, and they mentioned they have security systems. So we just wanted to go out and look at it, and they were very upfront, and they do excellent work from start to finish. And so we chose Fowler's TV. It's been great for us here at TLC Learning Center, and in Fowler's TV would be great for anyone. Is it time to upgrade your inefficient system? Then let New Knoxville Supply install new water furnace geothermal. Calculate your savings and see how you can save up to 70% on your heating, cooling, and hot water costs. Save even more with the 30% renewable tax credit. Water furnace geothermal from New Knoxville Supply offers the safest, cleanest, 
and most efficient means to heat and cool your home. Call us for a free estimate and be sure to ask us about the Water Furnace Symphony app. It's all at NewKnoxvilleSupply.com. Both teams did not score in the first inning. The Wildcats had a runner but doubled off. It's the second inning of work here for Josh Nixon. He'll face the heart of the lineup, four, five, and six, starting with the second baseman, Zach Zimmerman. Or Zimmerman. Zimmerman, a junior, 278, 12 RBIs on the season. Nixon able to retire the Knights in order in the first inning. First pitch, he shows a bunt. Able to get a little bit on it, but it goes foul. Sometimes you think it's unusual for the cleanup batter to bunt, but Crespi has a reputation. They will bunt anywhere in the lineup. And Minster knows that these two teams have played each other a lot here. We'll talk about that in a minute. There's a curveball, and Zimmerman just wails at it. Before last year, Minster and Crestview had played each other five straight years from 2010 to 2014 in this district. And there's a curveball that gets away from Stubbs. He tags a runner for the first strikeout. Strikeout on three pitches there for Nixon. Brings up Luke Gerardo, the catcher. Junior, 276 on the season. These two teams played each other during this season. There's a low ball one. Crestview won that game back on April 20th at Convoy, 13 to six. But neither one of these teams threw their top pitchers in that game. Pitches outside, two and zero. Oh. Gerardo the batter, Ross in the shortstop on deck. Two and zero oh on Gerardo. Winding the pitch and there's a ground ball. Shortstop Falk. Over to Holscher at first. Two outs. Spencer Ross in the shortstop. Left-handed batter hitting 393, the highest in the batting order. 14 RBIs for the junior Ralston. First pitch by Nixon, a curveball. High in the zone, but a strike. Nixon's really mixed up his pitches between fastballs and curves so far. Wind, and there's another curveball. That hit goes high. Looks like Ralston faked the bunt there as a third baseman, Isaac Schmeezing, charged right away. One and one count. Two outs. This one low. Two and one, two on. Or two outs, struck out the first one, the second one grounded out to short, and there's a pitch high, three and one. On deck is the right fielder, Jacob Painter. Nixon has retired the first five batters so far tonight against Crestview. Line the pitch to Stubbs. There's a ground ball, base hit into center field. Ralston the first hit of the game for either team. He goes right up the middle. Nixon not able to get a glove on it. So first base runner for the Knights. Brings up Jacob Painter, the right fielder. Painter hitting 298 on the season, junior. Crestview as a team hits 291. So a pretty good batting team. We're also in a pretty good lead at first base. Nixon from the stretch, fastball inside, 1-0. Ralston being held on by Brett Holscher at first base. Nixon from the stretch. There's a strike on the outside corner. 1-1. One and one. Stretch one and one. Ground ball. Schmeezing to third. He'll throw it across the diamond. Holscher catches and tags to complete the put out. So the Crestview Knights get one hit, strand one. We're in the middle of the second inning. Crestview zero, 
Minster Zero on NK Telco Sports. I happened to pivot wrong and hurt my knee. I ended up tearing my ACL. It hit me pretty hard because I, I love playing lacrosse. I met my surgeon and he made me feel confident about being able to get back into playing lacrosse. They always just took such good care of me and they really were confident in what they were doing, which made me feel confident that I would be able to get back to playing lacrosse. Your employees are your most valuable asset. Protect them by stopping copier violence. 4U Office provides a full line of quality printers and copiers that keeps your team working efficiently and safely. Welcome back to Veterans Field, Coldwater, Ohio for the district semifinal between Minster and Crestview. Zero to zero, middle of the second inning. Wildcats are have their four, five, and six batters up. Niemeyer, Lemkel, and Stubbs. Crestview got their first hit in the top of the second inning. Not able to advance him at all. Wildcats in the first inning had Peter Falk on, but he was doubled up on a bunt play, that bunt that was popped up, and he was doubled off first base as he was running with the pitch. So the junior, John Niemeyer, to the plate. Honorable mention in the MAC this year. Niemeyer steps in lefty against lefty again. Clifton with the line. Foul away on the left side there by Niemeyer. Splitting the defensive lineup in left field, Peyton Niddle, Jordan Miller, the center fielder, Jacob Penner, the right fielder. We told you the infield before. We'll go over it again for Crestview after a couple pitches here. There's a curveball as low infield on third base, Caden Hurlis, the shortstop is Spencer Ralston. Second baseman, Zach Zimmerman. First baseman, Brant Richardson. Pitcher is Colby Clifton. And the catcher is Luke Gerardo. 1-1 one, one pitch. There's a shot into left field, and it hangs long enough for Niddle to get to it. L7 for the first out. Brings to the plate sophomore Alex Lemkel. Second baseman hitting 357 on the team. Second in the lineup for the Wildcats. Last year he played for LCC. In the summer he moved into the Minster School District. First pitch is outside. 1-0. and Clifton walked the first batter on five pitches in Falk ever since his control has been much better. Pitch is high. 2-0 and now. On deck is the catcher Ben Stubbs. Lift him with the pitch. There's a, another, or there's a strike high. Mentioned these two teams have played each other five straight years from 2010 to 2014 in the district. Crestview's won three of those five games. We'll go through them as we get a minute. There's a strike. Levels count at two and two. In 2010, Crestview won 3-0 in the regional semi. They ended up advancing to regionals. 2011 and 12, Minster won both of those. They won state both of those years. Pitches outside three and two. In 2011, Minster won easily 13 to four and in a classic in the district final. Minster won four to three in 2012. Crestview stranded the bases loaded on the last play of the game there. And there's a shot into right field by Lemko. It's a base hit. Slicing away from the right fielder, Painter. Lemko will turn for a second. There's a close play and he is out. Good throw by the right fielder, Painter, as Lemko did not stop, did not hesitate. He tried to get into it, but a good throw by Painter. Hit by Lemko. He is out on the play. Nine to two on the nine to six on the put out there for the second out. So two outs now. Ben Stubbs checks in for the Wildcats. First pitch a strike. Can Lemko had a base hit down the right field line, slicing away from Painter. Lemko tried to go to second, and Painter gunned him down. 0-1 pitch in the dirt. 
One and one. So two innings of the row. The Wildcats have a base runner on, but he's out on the bases. Folk was doubled up on a bunt attempt in the first inning. Pitch is high. Going back to those five straight years after those two wins by Minster in 2011 and 12, which they won state. 2013, Crestview won 10 to 2 in a set district semi. And two, three, two years ago, Crestview won 5 to 2 in the district final. Both those years, 2013 and 14, Crestview advanced to the state semis that year. And there, they'll say that is tipped off of Stubbs there. Stubbs said it hit my arm there. He said it hit me. It didn't hit the bat. The ump is. Not a green, so deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the bottom of second. And there is a shot into center field, a base hit for Stubbs. On the 2-2 pitch, junior catcher Stubbs. The second hit of the inning for the Wildcats. Brings to the plate Isaac Schmeezy, Isaac Schmeezing. Sophomore third baseman hitting 200 on the season. Played most of the season on JV. Was moved up in about the last week and a half, mostly for his defense. Stubbs gets back on the throw over to Clifton. Clifton had Falk, the leadoff batter, picked off in the first inning. He was able to get out of it, but sent a pretty good message to the rest of the Minster team that he has a pretty good move. Looks into Gerardo. He will throw over to first to Stubbs. Stubbs not really a threat to run a whole lot. We'll check his stolen base numbers. Only one on the season. Minster has stolen 42 on the season. This time he'll go to the plate, and it will be a strike. Going right at the letters, right over the plate to Isaac Smeezy. 0-1. On Schmeezy. Clifton looks over to first, comes to the plate. That is high. Levels the count at one and one on deck as the left fielder, fellow sophomore Jared Hulsman. Stubbs on first with two outs. Clifton going over to the first, paying a lot of attention to Stubbs. Stubbs is a catcher. Normally catchers don't have a lot of speed, but Clifton's making sure he doesn't go anywhere. 1-1 one, one pitch on Smeezy. There's a pop fly straight back. Strike two. One and two on Schmeezy. Wildcats with two hits in this inning. But on the first hit, Alex Lemkel tried to stretch a single into double, and he was out at second base. Pitch to Smeezy. Ground ball black to Clifton. He will run over and hand it over to the first baseman, Richardson, and that will tire, retire the Wildcats. Wildcats get two hits, a strand one, no runs. We played two complete, no score here on NK Toko Sports. Wegner's IGA have been servicing their communities for more than 90 years, spanning three generations. Wegner's founded their business on two basic principles, excellent customer service and quality products. Visit all our locations and experience the finest selection of deli, fresh meats, and a variety of beverage choices. While there, don't forget to check out our vast selection of fresh coffee beans, produce, dairy, and bakery items. Visit Wagner's today in Minster, Fort Larmy, and now New Bremen. There's a lot of early mornings that go into 40 years of service, a lot of miles on these tires, and millions of pounds of cargo have traveled in these trailers. It's about dependable service, the kind of service that shows up 30 minutes early every time that gets your products, cargo, and business from point A to point B safely, quickly, and efficiently. We are St. Mary's Trucking, traveling the roads of commerce in Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Kentucky. Men and women who produce the solutions that make your business grow because the most important thing to them is you. We go to the third inning, no score. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Minster Dental, NK Toco Sports, Francis Furniture, Fowler's TV, NK Toco, New Knoxville Supply, Orthopedic Association of Southwest Ohio, For You Office Supplies, Wagner's IGA, St. Mary's Trucking, Minster Bank. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is First National Bank, First National Bank Think First. Replays are by Sydney Body Car Star, Keys to the Game. By Bud's Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Salina, where the dealer makes a difference. And our player of the game will be sponsored by Subway in New Bremen. That will be given out to our player of the game for Minster. Start off the third inning for the Knights will be the first baseman, Brant Richardson. 
First pitch is low for a ball. Richardson, 222 on the season. Richardson just a sophomore. 11 RBIs on the season. Winding the pitch, and there's a ground ball over to first base to Holscher. He will take it himself. Three unassisted for the first out. Up next for the Knights, designated hitter Derek Brio. It's for the left fielder Niddle. Brio, 250 hitter. He's a junior. One of five juniors in this lineup for Coach Jim Morton. First pitch, curveball is high. Hangs high. Winding the pitch. That is outside. 2 0. Nixon so far has only given up one hit. Clifton, his counterpart for Crestview, has only given up two hits to Minster. Pitch, and there's a popped up foul behind us. Two and one. On deck with the top of the order, Jordan Miller. There's another pop fly, so that'll even the count at two and two. Crestview had one out in order in the first inning. In the second inning, they got a base hit by Ralston. But that's been all. Nixon has retired all the rest of them. Wind in the pitch. That is low. Full count on the number nine batter. Never want to walk the bottom of the order. Bryo's battling here against Nixon. There's a ground ball up the middle tip. By Nixon, Lemko at second, throws the first high, but Holscher gets down for the, for the out. So that will go one to four to three as Nixon tipped it. And Lemko at second base, able to get it over to Holscher. Holscher skied for it and got down to the base on time for the second out. Brings up the top of the order, Jordan Miller. Miller is a center fielder. Grounded out to Nixon in the first inning. Nixon looking to the sign by Stubbs. Wind in the pitch. That is outside. They appeal to the first base umpire. and said he did not go on it. So that's ball one. Wind by Nixon. There's a pitch, and that's hits the dirt, and it bounces. It's almost above the screen. I actually was at a game here last year, and I saw one bounce all the way over, which is amazing how high this screen here. But that one almost, that one within about two feet from going over. 2-0 pitch here to Miller. That pitch is a strike. Umpire, I'm sh where I'm a I get a late signal from the umpire. I'm sure the umpire is yelling it that the batter and the catcher know right away. But this time there's a strike, 2-2. Two and two. Deuce is wild. Against the leadoff batter, Miller on deck is the pitcher, Clifton. Two, two, two outs. Pitch, ground ball, off the plate to Nixon. Over to first, three up, three down. Nixon mows down the Knights. Middle of the third inning, no score here on NK Toko Sports. At Minster Bank, we understand that life can get hectic. That's why when it comes to your banking, we offer the services that make your life simpler with tools like person-to-person -person payments, pop money, mobile and online banking, and bill pay. But most of all, Minster Bank is a supportive member of your community with personal relationships and customer service that reach outside of our branches. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. Take a drive to the premier Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram dealership at Bud's in Salina. Enjoy our huge inventory, including the Ram 1500, Jeep, and Chrysler Town & Country. Top-rated Ram dealer in the surrounding area. Convenient six-day service center with Saturday hours, Monday through Thursday until 8 p.m. Bud's has an extensive business link vehicle offering with the Ram ProMaster 4500-5500 truck series. Stop by Bud's today at Route 127 in Salina. Go to the third inning, the Wildcats. Back to the plate. 
against the pitcher Colby Clifton. They have their 8, 9, and 1 batters, Hiltzman, Bryce Schmeezy, and the top of the order, Peter Falk. Clifton so far, he's, he's walked one. He's given up two hits in the last inning, but not touched for any runs so far for the lefty. Coming off back-to-back -back shutouts and dominating shutouts that he's had five to nothing and one to nothing over Marion Local and Delphi St. John. Last year, Crestview lost to Marion Local in the tournament, so they got a little bit of revenge in the sectional opener, where they defeated Delphi St. John, one to nothing. Getting ready to go here. The sophomore Jared Hillsman steps to the plate. Sophomore left fielder. I mean, 319 on the season. He will step in against Clifton here to start off the home half of the third inning for the Minster Wildcats. Clifton with the line. Swing and a miss for Hillsman. One of the few swings and misses that we've had tonight for the Wildcats. So there have been a lot of foul balls. The time he swung right through it. Second pitch, swing and a miss again. That time a curveball. First one's a fastball. Clifton throws a curveball. Now the Southbourne an 0-2 hole. Wildcats hitting 351 as a team, but a lot of that of late, they've been much lower than that. Pitches outside as Clifton really wanted that as his hat falls off after the pitch. One two pitch, there's popped up. So far, no strikeouts by Clifton. He has walked one. Right now, he's battling against the sophomore Jared Hillsman with a one two pitch. That is outside and low. He was counted two and two. Hillsman looks over to head coach. Mike Wiss over the third base coaching box and the first base coach, Jeff Stevie, assistant coach. 2-2 Two -two pitch, that's foul back as Hillsman's making him work. Swung and missed at the first two. After that, he's fouled off a couple, taking a couple balls. The count remains at two and two. On deck is the center fielder, Bryce Schmeezy for the Wildcats. Pitch to Hillsman in the dirt, that's low. Again, Clifton loses his cap. He loses it almost about every other pitch here, especially in this inning. So 3-2 on Hillsman, the leadoff batter here in the home half of the third inning. Pitch, and there's fouled again as Hillsman making Clifton work. Clifton had a three-hitter with 12 strikeouts against Marion Local. He had a one-hitter against Delphi St. John. Don't have the number of strikeouts, but he only threw 77 pitches, so he's very efficient. Here's the 3-2 pitch. There's a ground ball to short. Ralston over to Richardson for the first out. So Hillsman battled Clifton, but the end result is a ground out to shortstop and one out. Brings up the number nine batter, the center fielder, Bryce Schmeezing. Schmeezing, honorable mention in the MAC. Junior hitting 333 on the season. He had one home run, the only home run for the Wildcats all season. He had a grand slam at Belfast earlier in the season. Takes the first pitch for a strike. On deck is the top of the order, Peter Falk. Clifton against Schmeezy, swing and a miss, strike two. Clifton last year was honorable mention in the Northwest Conference. Schmeezy wants timeout. It's granted by the umpire, Michael Reinhardt. 0-2 pitch, Schmeezy against Clifton. Curveball that's a little too high. One and two. Schmeezy now one and two pitch. Swing and it's a foul off back. So staying alive 
Hillsman, be the previous batter, now Schmeezing. Making Clifton work a little bit. If nothing else, he's getting the pitch count up a little bit. One, two pitch again. And it's fouled off to the left side. Wildcats are making him work. The report on Clifton is that he could throw his curveball for strikes on both sides of the plate. He had a good fastball. He'll mix in some changes as well. One, two again to Schmeezy. And that is high. They'll say, well, he, did he go around? No. First base umpire said no, but he did not. So that levels the count at two and two. On deck again is the leadoff batter and shortstop Peter Falk. Winding the pitch, and that is fouled straight back. So again, Schmeezy making him work. No score. Crestview with one hit. Minster with just two hits here in the bottom of the third inning. Glad you're joining us here on NK Telco Sports. Pitch a swing and a miss. So Clifton with his first strikeout after a battle with Schmeezing. Like a slider, a little bit of off speed there. As Schmeezing swung through it for the second out. Brings up Peter Falk, the leadoff batter. He walked on five pitches in the first inning. First team all mac -er this year for the second year in a row. First pitch is a curveball for a strike. Falk walked. He almost got picked off first, and then a pitch later he was going on the pitch, and there was a bunt play that was popped up, and he was doubled up off of first base. In the first inning, there's a ground ball to the right side. Throw there by the Zimmerman with a good hustle play. It is thrown away. We will see how they rule that. Probably a hit. Falk had a, that was a heck of a play by Simmerman to get a glove on it. And he threw it there. I think I will call that a hit. Waiting for the official score. As he did a nice job of getting to it and threw it away there. We will mark it down as a hit. Let you know if that changes. Steps in as Brad Holscher. Actually, they called it an error. Boy, that's a tough error. That's a, he made a heck of a play to get there. Threw it away to first. Granted, the throw was perfect. He was probably out. but So that was an error. So two outs. Falk on first on the air. Standing pretty close to first base here. Pitch is high. Clifton's throwing a lot of pitches high throughout this game. Holscher in the first inning popped up on a butt attempt, which ended up doubling off Falk. 338 batter, 13 RBIs. Pitch is high, 2-0. and oh. Two and zero, oh, Falk on first, two outs. Holscher against Clifton. Pitch and a. There's a little bit of a delayed steal there by Falk, and he steals it. That's the 16th stolen base of the season by Falk. So two one. Two and one, they called a strike there on the pitch. Falk on second base with two outs. Pitch is high. First runner in scoring position tonight for the Wildcats. Now a three and one count on Holscher. Falk reached on a tough air call on the second baseman, Zimmerman. He steals second. Three one pitch on Holscher. Pitch, he swings and misses at. Runs the count full at three and two on deck is the number three batter pitcher Josh Nixon. Three two pitch, two outs, Falk on second. Clifton will step off. Go back onto the rubber. Looks to this catcher Gerardo. Pitch, and there's a pop fly straight back. You always have the situation, the runner on second base, if he can see the sign, he might signal in some way to the batter if it's curveball, fastball. 
So the Gerardo goes out to the pitcher, Clifton. This time they probably won't give a sign. They'll probably, they already said what pitch we want to throw here. And the runner can't tip off the hitter. So Holster steps back in, 3-2 pitch. Two outs, Falk on second. Pitch fouled straight back as Holster hangs tough. Clifton has had to work tough in their inning. He's had Hilsman schmeezing, and now Holster has taken him to a full count. The pitcher's count is mounted up here in the bottom of the third inning. All cats have hit the first runner in scoring position for either team as Falk is on second with two outs. 3 2 count. Pitch is high, so first and second. Holster draws the walk. Bring up the pitcher, Josh Nixon. He flew out to left field in the, in the first inning. Lefty against lefty early in his career, I think as recently as last year, Nixon would hit right-hander. He was a switch hitter, so he would hit right-hander. But this year, exclusively a left-handed hitter. Working against the southpaw, Colby Clifton. First and second, two outs. Falk on first, Holscher at second. First pitch to Nixon. Curveball is high again. Been high a lot of pitches. Coach Wharton will go out to the mound to talk to his senior left-hander. So we'd like to thank our sponsors for making this district semifinal possible. Minster Dental, NK Toco Sports, Francis Furniture, Fowler's TV, NK Toco, New Knoxville Supply, Orthopedic Association of Southwest Ohio, for you office supplies, Wagner's IGA, St. Mary's Trucking, Minster Bank, our keys to the game sponsor, Bud's Chrysler Dodge, G Bram, and Salina, where the dealer makes a difference. Our player of the game, sponsored by Subway of New Bremen. That's good stuff to Minster player. And on our first National Bank scoreboard, it is 0-0, zero to zero, but the Wildcats threatening here in the bottom of the third. Coach Wharton will walk back. Veteran coach, 33 years. Trying to calm down his senior left-hander with two on. The number three batter, Josh Nixon, to the plate. Senior against senior. Pitch, and that's fouled straight back by Nixon. He had a good cut on that one. Again, that was a pretty high pitch there. As Clifton has been high a lot, in, especially in this inning. Count is level at one and one. Runners on first and second, two outs. Bottom of the third inning, no scores. Clifton will step off. Nixon on the season, 273, first team all MAC for the third straight year. Pitch, curveball, nice curveball for the strike. That was a slower curveball than what he's been throwing. Nixon just watched that one for the second strike. One and two now. Pretty good speed on the bases, Falk at second, Holscher at first base. One, two pitch. Ground ball, that is foul. Runners will reset. Reset back to first and second. On deck is the cleanup batter, John Niemeyer, for the Wildcats. Nixon looking over to Coach Wiss at third base. He steps into the box. Looking for the th one two pitch. Ground ball. Over to second, Zimmerman will throw to first for the third out. Wildcats threaten, but that is all. No hits, a strand two. We go to the fourth inning, no score here on NK Toko Sports. Our communities are filled with history, culture, and ambition. People who put others first. We are a bank that is defined by what we do, not just who we are. We build relationships. We grow businesses. We support communities. We advise the people that matter most to us, our customers. Stop in at any of our five locations, sign up for internet banking, or download our mobile app to better serve you. We can assist you with your next loan, personal accounts, investments, or business needs. Think first. First National Bank. Member FDIC. Hello? I've been in an accident. My van's not drivable, and I have my kids, and they need to get to school, Ma'am. but I can't. Ma'am, relax. We'll take care of it. Thank you. 
At Sydney Body Car Star, we don't just take care of your vehicle, we take care of you. With Enterprise Rent-A-Car on site, we get you back to your daily routine with minimal interruptions, returning your car and your family back to normal. Sydney Body Car Star, relax, we'll take it from here. We go to the fourth inning, 0-0 zero to zero in this district final game between the Minster Wildcats and the Crestview Knights. Crestview was just one hits so far. Crestview with, or Minster with three hits. They changed the scoring play that they did. Uh, they earlier had given Falk an error, had an error on when Falk hit a ball that Zimmerman grouted first base. They ended up changing that now, and that is a hit. That's a good thing because a good reversal there. They, so three hits for Minster on the game, but the big column is zero runs for both teams. First batter is Clifton. There's a ground ball up the middle. Falk over to first for one pitch, one out. It's an easy ground ball so far to Falk. Nixon only with one, one strikeout so far. And Clifton, he collapses down the first baseline. I don't know if he landed on the base wrong after first. I did not really notice it, but he is now to the right of the first baseline, almost into the outfield. So he has a trainer looking at him. Looks at it like on his knee right now. I don't know if he was he tripped over the base or he stumbled after it. I did not see it. He was retired easily on the play by the shortstop Falk. So that throws a lot of things into play. As you see, somebody getting warm up. As Clifton's the starting pitcher, he gets up limping a little bit. Looks like his right leg, so that would be his plant leg, not his push leg. They got activity. They got somebody warming. I haven't been able to catch a number yet. They have a right-hander warming up here. We'll see if Clifton can go. He has some time here. At least two more batters have to hit. So we will check that as we go along as the pitcher Clifton for Crestview falls after he goes past first base. Help to the dugout. We'll see what happens. They will warm up a right-hander. In the meantime, third baseman Caden Hurlis to the plate. Southmore grounded out to third in the first inning. He grounded out to third base in the first inning. 364 on the season. Curveball in the dirt. Hurlis, the number three batter. 1-0 pitch against Hurlis. There's a shot to center field. That is right at Smees in the center field for the second out. Interesting if Clifton, the starting pitcher, gets hurt in the first game. St. Henry's pitcher, Mitchell Stallman, he's a player of the year in the MAC. He got hurt on a play that he was covering third after a bunt, and he left the game after the first inning. He was slid into some type of an ankle injury. Sport recovery won that game 2-0. to zero. Ball in the dirt. That's against Zimmerman. Nick Twaits for Fort Recovery threw a one hitter. He gave the last. His only hit was given up with two outs in the bottom of the seventh to Parker Link, a clean base hit. St. Henry had threatened, had runners in second and third to end the game, which Fort Recovery won two to nothing. Second pitch is outside 2 0 against the cleanup batter, Zimmerman. Zimmerman, the second baseman, junior. Winding the pitch, and there's a pop fly back. Crestview still warming up a pitcher in the along the first baseline as Clifton went down running past first on his first out of this inning. There's a pitch outside. I'd be surprised if Clifton doesn't at least give it a try when he goes out there, but we will see. Three and one right now on Zimmerman. Pitch, and there's a shot down the left field line. That's a base hit. Takes a funny hop, actually closer to the left fielder. Tilsman. So Simmerman with a base hit. Second hit of the game by Crestview brings Luke Gerardo, the catcher, to the plate. Gerardo grounded out to short in the second inning. 276 on the season. And Crestview 13 and 7 on the season. The Wildcats 17 and 9. Two teams that know each other very well. Play each other every year in the regular season. 
And now a timeout. Now Gerardo wants to talk to Jim Wharton, head coach at Crestview, 33 years. He's a member of the Ohio High School Hall of Fame. He's won 17 Northwest Conference titles, 22 sectionals, eight districts. He's been to state three times in 93, 2013, and 2014. Lost in the semifinal each time. Gerardo wants to be clear on this play. What's happening? He looks over to the sign. Any game you want to be for sure, but especially in a district semifinal game. Zimmerman at first. Curveball. That's a strike as it dips down into the strike zone. The Stubbs frames it from the catching position. 0-1-1 on Gerardo. Zimmerman at first base. Fastball just a little bit outside. He levels the count at one and one. First two batters are retired. Clifton on a ground ball to short. Hurlis on a line shot to center field, but a base hit by Zimmerman to left field. 1-1 one, one pitch, a long look there by Nixon. A curveball. Stubbs will throw to first. He's easily back by Zimmerman. They'll call that pitch a ball. Two and one. Stubbs thought the center room was getting a little bit too far, so he reminded him I could throw behind you. Was back easily, but center room on second, on first, two outs. Over to the right side, Holscher giving chase. Not able to get to there as the pitcher again warms up for the Knights. It's a right-hander. I don't have the number, but we will learn a lot in the bottom of the fourth inning if Clifton will come out after the injury or not. Check that. We got a number. We'll have to look up a name here in a little bit for Crestview. Pitch. Ground ball. Schmeezing in third. Knocks it down. Fires over. And he's safe at first base. Schmeezing bobbled it at third base. Tried to throw over there. Only play was to first base. But just on a bang-bang play, Gerardo beats out the play as he reaches on an air now first and second. Wildcats are first and second in the bottom of the third inning but not able to score. Ralston's played. He had a single in the his first at-bat in the second inning. Pitch at his outside. Ball one. Ralston hit a base hit right up the middle in the second inning. The first was the first hit of the night for Crestview. Nixon, the stretch. There's a strike right at the letters. One ball, one strike. Zimmerman at second base. Gerardo at first. Two outs. One one pitch here on Ralston. Curveball over to Smeezy in the third again. He will throw it over to first, and he retires. Schmeezing recovers for his air on the previous one, gets the third out. Two runners stranded on a hit and an air. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning, still no score here on NK Toko Sports. You owe it to yourself twice a year at checkup at Minster Dental Care. Our specialized doctors, Jim Overman, Jim Myring, Sean Sharp, and Philip Slonkowski are ready to give you the smile you've always dreamed of at any stage of your life. Pediatric, orthodontic, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry are just a few of the services offered. Our latest advancements include Seric Dentistry that allows us to create and deliver a crown in one convenient visit. We're located on State Route 66 in Minster, 419-628-3380 to schedule your appointment today. You owe it to yourself. NK Telco Sports, Ohio's leading sports broadcasting company, is dedicated to sports coverage, filming over 120 collegiate and high school sporting events that bring quality content and excellent sportsmanship to the big screen. Team up with us as an NK Telco sponsor and receive many benefits, commercials that will be seen by thousands of viewers, multiple name mentions, live web ads, monthly bill stuffers, and discounted network ad insertion spots. Packages are available for any budget. Contact us today. Go to the bottom of the fourth inning. New pitcher for Crestview as Clifton obviously must have been injured. He is replaced on the mound by a right-hander, Derek Stout. Stout has pitched just seven in the third innings this year. 
Zero ERA has not given up a run. He is 1-0 and on the season. Five strikeouts, three walks. Stout is just a sophomore. In for the senior Clifton. So this changes everything. Clifton with the reputation coming off back-to-back -back complete game shutouts in tournament. Now they turn to a sophomore Stout who had to get warmed up in a hurry as Clifton is the leadoff batter on the fourth. When he Somewhere after he ran at first base, he went down and took a while to get up, and evidently he's injured at this point. So in now is Stout, the pitcher for Crestview. Also getting some activity in the bullpen. That's just probably a getting loose type thing. Looks like Aaron Earth is for Minster. Again, sometimes you'll just see people, especially pitcher players that are in the field, just getting loose just in case. So Derek Stout, only seven in the third innings on the season for the sophomore. He's listed as a pitcher, first baseman slash outfielder. So now you have a right-hander. Wildcats have been facing a left-hander, so it switches it around, and Stout's first batter will be left-handed hitting cleanup batter John Niemeyer. Coach West talking to the home plate umpire, just getting clarification. Stout is in for Clifton. There's always that possibility if Clifton is not injured too bad, he could come back in and re-enter. You have that in high school, but evidently, I don't think they're thinking that it's it right now. So Derek Stout on the mound. Right-hander working against Niemeyer. There's a ground ball, base it in the right field. Niemeyer, first pitch against Stout. Goes to right field for the base hit. So leadoff batter is on, brings Alex Lemko to the plate. Let's see what the play will be here. Coach Wiss always likes a lot of bunts, especially when the leadoff batter is on. The runs have been in a premium here. But Lemko on the season hitting 350, 357 on the season. He had a base hit in the first inning, tried to stretch into the double, was thrown out. They throw over to first, and that's thrown away from Niemeyer. He's able to advance to second as it trickles away from the first baseman. So they did a pickoff play. A lot of times they do that just to see if the, the batter will screw around to see if a bun is on or not. So now you don't have to worry about bunning him over. Now you'll see if they try to bun him over to third. Niemeyer led off with a base hit. He goes over to second on the errant pickoff. Lemko at the plate. Lemko will square around. That will be outside. Again, Derek Stout in the game. Relieving Colby Clifton. He went down in the after went down in the top of the inning after running to first base. 1-0 on Lemko. Squares around and it that's fouls it. In this situation, you got its runner on for, on second base. As Niemeyer goes to third, Check, they say that he bunted through that. There was not a, so they're leaving Niemeyer at third base. Well, they called a balk. They called a balk on the play. So balk goes, Niemeyer goes to third. So Niemeyer got a hit. Now you advance on an air and a balk. One, oh, pitch, and there's a shot down the first bit, third baseline, base hit, first run of the game is Lemko with an RBI single, and the Wildcats are on the board. RBI by Alex Lemko as Niemeyer comes around, so on the base hit. Niemeyer again had the base hit, advanced the second on the air on the pickoff. Got the third on the balk, and one home on the RBI single by Lemko. Stubbs up, nobody out. Could be another bunning situation. He's no sign of a bun here as the pitch is outside. Here, Derek Stout in relief here by Clifton. 
Right now he's given up two hits. Sophomore's only given up, only pitched seven innings all season. In a tough spot, Lemko squares around, takes a strike. Lemko back at first base. Count is level at one and one. Stubbs looks down to Coach Wiss at third base. Stretch, squares around. This time he gets the bun down to down the first baseline, and it will go in as the Richardson at first base. Richardson at first base knocked it, slid into cover it, and that will be an error. Ouch. Richardson went in there, tried to field the bunt, and he got it, it hit his cleat. So everything going wrong for the Knights, everything going right for the Wildcats. First and second now. Second error of the inning here for Crestview. Coach Wharton comes out to the mound to conference and try to settle down his infield. As they have had two errors in this inning. Which is Wildcats have scored one run. Two runs are two runners are on first and second. Niemeyer has scored. Lemko at second. Stubbs at first. And to the plate will be Isaac Smeezing, sophomore third baseman. you got to figure this is a bunny situation. Right now, Wildcats hope to take advantage of this. Problems by the Knights. So first and second, see what Schmeezing will do. I think most people are figuring a bunt. Always tricky with a guy coming from second with a third baseman will do. Stretch, Schmeezing squaring around already. Here's the pitch, he bunts through it for the first strike. It's a high strike, a nice pitch by Stout. That's where you want to throw it on a bunt play. Throw some heat and throw it high. It's tough to bunt. Schmeezing bunt it through that. Stretch, and they do the pickoff play behind Lemko. Almost got him. Lemko able to get back. He breathes a sigh of relief there. So they charge the runners, and the second baseman snuck behind him. Normally, he's breaking the first base. 0-1 here. Schmeezing tries to get the bunt down. He's able to get it down. Runner has to, the pitcher, the third baseman, Hurlis, has to go to th first base. He probably had a play at third if he wanted there as Ralston was there. But he couldn't hesitate, so Schmeezing gets the job done. A sacrifice bunt. That will go five to three. So now runners at second and third with one out. Big opportunity for the Wildcats as Jared Hillsman to the plate with the infield in with one out. Derek Stout in relief for the injured Colby Clifton. Hillsman really battled Clifton. He ended up grounding out to third base in the second inning in his last at bat. Before Stout balks. So that's the situation that Stout does not want to do here. First pitch to Hillsman. Ground ball, that is foul. On deck is Bryce Schmeezing. Big opportunity for the Wildcats in the top of the fourth inning. They have scored one, but runners at second and third with one out. Eighth place batter Hillsman at the dish. Long look by Stout. Pitch curveball, nice curveball for the strike. That froze Hillsman. Good spot there, so... He had a fastball he fouled off, and now he threw a curveball. So Hillsman's got a battle here with 0-2. 0-2 pitch. Curveball. There's a fly ball to center field. The center fielder Miller underneath it. Both runners will advance on the sacrifice fly by Hillsman. So Hillsman gets the job done with the RBI. Sacrifice fly. So two runs now in. 
Brings the center fielder Bryce Schmeezing to the plate. And this inning started with a base hit by Neymar. He was, he went to second on air. He was balked to third. And a base hit by Lemko brought him in. An air on the bunt play by Stubbs put the two runners on in the first pitch to Schmeezing for strike one. After that, Isaac Schmeezing got the bunt down, advanced two runners, and then Jared Hilson with the sacrifice fly to center field. Got the second run in. Now runner on third. Pitch is now one and one to Bryce Schmeezing. Starting pitcher Nixon is getting loose, and it's been a long inning in this cool temperature. As you can see on the scoreboard, 57 degrees. Winding the pitch, that is outside. Two and one. Schmeezing honorable mention in the MAC. Struck out in the second inning, or the third inning against Clifton. Fouls that one back. Deuces wild here, two runs in. In the bottom of the fourth inning, the Wildcats leading 2-0 to zero on our first National Bank scoreboard. Wind in the pitch. There's a flare to center. Be a close play and a play by Ralston with a big play. Spencer Ralston with a nice play from shortstop. Able to get Schmeezing by a half, half step, but a good inning for the Wildcats as they scored two runs. We played four complete, 2-0 to zero Minster here on NK Toko Sports. NK Telco is your hometown provider. We are Northwest Ohio's leading independent broadband company that brings fiber to your home. Larger competitors talk about it, but we've been delivering our fiber network for over 10 years, guaranteeing more bandwidth and services. Over 80 HD channels, Echo Whole Home DVR, interactive channel guides, in-demand, internet-based phone systems, and local news and sports channels. Innovative, futuristic, and cost-effective. The big game is right around the corner. Are you ready for it? Come into Francis Furniture and find the right fit for you and your friends in our Lazy Boy Comfort Studio. With Lazy Boy Premier Sofa and Sectionals, you can custom order a look that's just your style. Choose from hundreds of decorator fabrics or choose genuine leather for its luxurious feel and durability. Come into Francis Furniture today, the area's only Lazy Boy Comfort Studio. We go to the first, th first inning. Our score in our first National Bank scoreboard, Minster with two, Crestview with zero as Minster scores two runs in the top of the bottom of the fourth inning. Bottom of the order up for Crestview, Painter, Richardson, and Brio. Working against the Wildcats starter, Josh Nixon. He's given up just two hits so far. Last inning, he got through a little bit of a threat as he stranded two runners on first and second on a ground out to third. Stepping in is Jacob Painter, the right fielder, junior hitting 298 on the season, grounded out to third in the second inning. There's a high chopper. Lemko at second, centers it, fires, close play, and he's safe. That was a high hopper. Lemkul said he would take it at second, fired it to first, a bang, bang play. That'll be an infield hit by Painter. So Richardson to the plate, first baseman, freshman. So the leadoff batter for the Knights is on, as Nixon will throw over. I think the first time he's thrown over tonight that was a very soft one, just trying to get his bearings. So Painter on an infield hit is on first base. Richardson, he will bunt it. Schmeezing from third, goes to first to Holscher. For the sacrifice bunt there by Richardson. See, five to three on the out. There was a pitcher, catcher, and third baseman there, and Schmeezing took it. Sacrifice moves Painter over to second base. So the Crestview has a runner in scoring position with one out. Designated hitter Derek Brio to the plate. 
Grounded out in the third inning. Calls timeout. Brio gets 250 on the season. He was grounded out on a one to four to three ground out that went from off the pitcher to the second baseman to first base. Nixon looks in, steps off, reset, one out. Painter on second. He got an infield hit. He was sacrificed over to second base. Wildcats with a 2-0 lead. Nixon, long look, looks back to second. Fires to the plate. Curveball hits the outside corner for strike one. 0-1 on Brio, top of the order. Jordan Miller on deck. It's the key I bat here. Always want to get, take advantage of the nine hitter. And they will call a balk on Nixon. I think they said he did not stop. The home plate umpire calls it a balk. There was a balk in the last inning against Crestview. Called by the base ump, this time the home plate ump. So now the runner on third base. We'll see what the Wildcats do here. They will play the corners in, it looks like. If Brio's able to hit it in the middle, they will let the run score. Again, you'll give up the run, but you're trying to keep a keep it as a small inning. Curveball, that is a little high. Levels count at one and one. Nixon trying to settle down, was a little bit upset on that ball play, ball call. Painter at first base. Knight's trying to get on the board. Cut this lead in half at 2-0. Oh. There's a squeeze play going to Holscher at first base. He will throw over to second. He gets the runner out at first, but the suicide squeeze works as Brio gets the bunt down. Able to get the bunt down to the first baseman. Holscher had no play but to go there, so an RBI there gets the first run in. Crestview so plays small ball as Brio with a sacrifice bunt. An RBI and cuts the lead to two to one. Curveball against Miller to start him off by Nixon. Leadoff batter Miller is 0 for 2. He's grounded out to Nixon both times. Winding the pitch, another curveball outside. Miller, a 246 batter, a 407 on base percentage. One and one count here against Nixon. Wine, that is low. One run, three hits, two errors on Crestview. Two runs, six hits, one error on the Wildcats. Nixon working from the stretch. He'll have to step off. The ball gets loose in the, in the bullpen as Crestview has somebody else warming up. Two and one. And that is inside three and one. As the pitcher Stout is on deck. So if the Knights want to make a change and pinch hit for Stout, getting somebody warm up as Nixon will walk. Miller, that's his first walk of the game. It looks like Stout will come to the plate. out on the stats that I received from Coach Wharton. I do not have him on here anywhere. I'm not sure if he hasn't had any, any at-bats or he just maybe he played mostly JV. You never know a situation like this. But right now Coach Wiss out to the mound to talk to Coach to Josh Nixon. Coach talked to his infield. One run in here for Crestview. He's able to play some small ball with a, with an infield hit by Painter. He was sacrificed over, he was balked to second, he was balked to third, and then a suicide squeeze made it a two-to-one game. He walked Miller, Stout to the plate. I'm sure no scouting report on Stout right now. If you're Coach Wish, you're probably telling Nixon, just throw your good stuff. Should be plenty good against the, what would be probably an inexperienced sophomore here, Stout. 
They came on to pitch the last inning, two to one. Minster scored two in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Wild Knights have scored one here in the top of the fifth. So two outs. Miller is on first base. Miller probably a threat to run. We'll check the stats on that as well. Miller with a decent lead. He's holding. First pitch is low. Miller's has six stolen bases on the season. Stout his first at bat after coming in relief for Clifton. Steps off, a reset. Miller goes back to first base. He now gets his lead at first. Pitch is high and tight, 2-0. and oh. Two balls and no strikes. Nixon walked his first batter. And Miller, now 2-0 and oh on Stout. That is low. Not what Nixon wants to do on a new batter. And he's got a good batter behind him in Hurlis, one of the better batters for Crestwood, the number three spot. 3-0 three and oh here on Stout. You got to figure he is taking here. Pitch is high as Nixon walks back-to-back -back batters. Bring up the third baseman, Hurlis. Hurlis is grounded out to third. He hit a line shot to center field right at the center fielder, Bryce Schmeezing, the last time. So first and second. Another threat for the Crestview Knights against Josh Nixon. Two outs, two on. Pitch curveball, that is outside, oh, outside hits the corner. Strike one. O one 1 pitch, Hurlis against Nixon. Runners at first and second, two outs. Two to one, Minster. There's a high fly ball, left side of the infield. Looks like Falk is underneath it, and he catches it. The Wildcats escape, but one run in the inning for Crestview. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Minster 2, Crestford 1, here on NK Toco Sports. Here at TLC, we expanded our business, so we wanted the security of knowing exactly where all the kids are and what's going on in each of the rooms. We chose Fowler's because we've done all our televisions with them, and they mentioned they have security systems. So we just wanted to go out and look at it, and they were very upfront, and they do excellent work from start to finish. And so we chose Fowler's TV. It's been great for us here at TLC Learning Center, and in Fowler's TV would be great for anyone. If you want to save 70% on your heating, cooling, and hot water costs, the answer is right under your feet. Let New Knoxville Supply install a water furnace geothermal system and use the natural temperature from the earth for a more constant temperature in your home. Also, ask about our new Symphony Home Management System. Control temperatures, track energy usage, and receive safety alerts for everything, including your sump pump. All from anywhere, anytime. Now is the time to calculate your savings at NewKnoxvilleSupply.com. Bottom of the fifth inning for the Wildcats. They lead two to one over Crestview. Top of the order up, Falk, Holscher, and Nixon. Coach Mike Wiss. Derek Stout in his second inning of work, in for the injured Colby Clifton, who left in the third inning after falling down after running to first base. We have some activity in the Wildcat bullpen. It's Aaron Ernst warming up again. Again, that could just be ready when needed. Peter Falk, one for one on the day with a walk. Walked in the first inning, had a base hit in the third inning. First time here against Stout, he tries to bunt down the first baseline, that is foul. Foul, Falk up, one of three straight seniors here in this lineup, the top of the order. All three seniors, Falk, Holscher, and Nixon here in the bottom of the fifth inning. 
Pitch by Stout is low. One and one. Wildcat scored two in the bottom of the fourth. The Knights scored one in the top of the fifth. One one pitch out is fouled off to the right side. Winner of this game will play Fort Recovery on Saturday for the district final. Fort Recovery defeated St. Henry 2 to nothing on a one-hitter by Nick Twaits for Fort Recovery. Had a no-hitter till the last out of the game with two outs in the seventh inning, and Parker Link for St. Henry had a base hit. But he finished it off 2 nothing win for Fort Recovery. Curveball outside, levels the count at 2-2. Two and two. Falk steps in, 2-2. Two and two. Stout has fouled off again by Falk. Two balls, two strikes. Lead-off batter here for Falk. He's a good base runner, so this is a big at bat if he can get on base. The Wildcats is. Again, the winner of this game will come back on Saturday afternoon and then for a trip to go to regional this year. The, re the district winner goes to the north this year. They haven't officially announced who, where the side of Northwest Regional is. Coach Wharton is over there talking to the umpire, Bob Grubal. I'm not sure. He wants to go out and, and look at the – he has the baseball in his hand. I'm not sure what he's trying to tell the umpires. I don't know if he wants to talk to the pitcher, but he has a baseball. I don't know if he's something wrong with the baseball. That was probably one that was fouled off. And he's going to go and they're going to talk to the third base umpire. This is interesting as while he's there, Coach Wharton will say, I can talk to the pitcher. Stout here, I'm not sure what this has to do. I think they're. Well, I think the first baseman has been off the field. First baseman's off the field right now. Um. I'm not sure what's happening there. Um, he's had to go off to there. He looks like he's in this. He's off right now. As a, so he had to get off the field quickly, and they're talking about the baseball, but it's really the first base. Had to, first base. Men had to leave quickly. He's off the field right now. Um, so I'm not sure what's happening exactly. Uh, some type of injury or sickness or there. The first baseman's not on it right now. Um, one of the assistant coaches comes out. I think at some point you have to make a substitution. You just can't wait forever. Uh, so... We will see what's happening here. Stout still pitching. Number 19 looks like he's coming in. Tanner Kroll. So interesting things here today. Tanner Kroll goes to first base. Kroll will come to first base as the first baseman Richardson had to leave suddenly. We don't know what happened there. So we've had a pitcher leave or injury. We've had a first baseman leave unexpectedly. Kroll is now on first base. Bottom of the fifth inning here as Falk is up, still up. Nobody out. 2-2 two -two pitch here working against Stout. And there's a swing and a miss. Strike three. So after that long delay, Falk able to strike Falk Stout able to strike out Falk for the first out. So after all that one out, Brett Holster to the plate. Holster is 0 for 1 on the night. Ball one low. Holster Popped out by Bon attempt in the first inning, and then he walked in the third inning. 
to the senior first baseman, Brett Holscher. Pitches inside. Holscher last year played primarily left field. This year he has changed to first base. Had a lot of different lineups as Coach was trying to find the right combination between left and first base. There's ball three. Ultimately, he decided on Hillsman and left and Holscher at first base. Holscher didn't really play first base much in high school. Played a lot when he was younger, from what I understand. Now he has a 3-0 count on Stout. He takes the strike. 3-1. and one. On deck is the pitcher, Josh Nixon. Pitch is high, so Holscher will walk. Check his stats. Decent speed. Probably not quite the speed that uh, Falk would be. Holster's had three stolen bases on the season. Nice throw, slow throw over by Stout. Just to get his bearings again, just trying. That's his first throw over. Sometime the first time, you just want to make sure you know where first base is. Next time, if you need to throw it hard. Nixon up. Pitch. Takes a curveball. That is outside. Ball one. Falk struck out to start this inning. Holster walked. 1-0 count here on Nixon. There's a strike. Nixon's 0 for 2. He flew out to left. He grounded out to second for the senior Nixon. There's a fly ball to right field. Easy fly ball for Painter for the second out. So two outs. Holster still on first base. John Niemeyer to the plate. He was the first batter against Wolf. I'm check that. Against Stout, the pitcher. He greeted him on the first pitch with a base hit. Niemeyer one for two on the night. He lined out to left field in the second inning, and then that base hit the fourth inning. Later scored the first run of the night. First pitch is outside, ball one. Two to one Wildcats, bottom of the fifth inning here in this district semi, winner to play Fort Recovery on Saturday in the district final. Check swing, that is low, 2-0. and oh. On deck is Alex Lemkul. He had the RBI single to score the first run, scored Niemeyer in the fourth inning. 2-0 and oh on Niemeyer. There's a chopper to the second baseman. He bobbles it, all hands are safe. That was a slow roller to Zimmerman. Holscher. I think purposely the base runner, he tried to get in his way there, and he did a good job of it as Simmerman babbles it for an air. That'll be the third air of the night for the Knights. So Holscher advances to second base. Lemko, as they give a hit on that play, on the slow hopper. So hit for Niemeyer. That is outside. Ball one. Derek Stout on the mound. Two on, two out for the Wildcats. Lemko the batter. That hits him. Loads the bases. Lemko flips the bat away. He goes to first base. Brings up Ben Stubbs. So Ben Stubbs up at the plate. Bases loaded, two outs, a big at bat here. Wildcats lead by one, but a base hit would probably score here. Score two here as you have good speed on the bases. Holster at, sec at third, Neymar at second, Lemko at first base. Now working from the windup, that is high ball one. Derek Stout had two on or two outs and nobody on. 
There are two outs and a runner on first base, but now the base is loaded as high again, 2-0. Two and zero. The outfielders are deep in, in right, left and right field. Bases loaded, two outs. Ben Stubbs the batter, a two zero count. The stout steps off. Wind in the pitch. There is a pop. In the short right field, actually the second base and Simmerman will catch it. For the third out, so the Wildcats threaten, but no runs. They strand two. We go to the sixth inning. Wildcats two, Knights one here on NK Toko Sports. I happened to pivot wrong and hurt my knee. I ended up tearing my ACL. It hit me pretty hard because I, I love playing lacrosse. I met my surgeon and he made me feel confident about being able to get back into playing lacrosse. They always just took such good care of me and they really were confident in what they were doing, which made me feel confident that I would be able to get back to playing lacrosse. Your employees are your most valuable asset. Protect them by stopping copier violence. 4U Office provides a full line of quality printers and copiers that keeps your team working efficiently and safely. Go to the sixth inning. Josh Nixon back on the mound. Defending a 2-1 lead. He'll face the heart of the lineup. 4-5-6, and six, Silverman, Gerardo, and Ralston. Nixon has worked out of some trouble the last couple innings, gave up a run in the bottom of the fifth inning. Zimmerman up, he has struck out and had a base hit in his two plate appearances. Top of the sixth inning, one run game. Nixon has gone so far with their senior pitcher, their number one pitcher, Josh Nixon. The Knights have had to take out Colby Clifton, their starter. He's been replaced with Derek Stout, who's battled through, but Wildcats with a 2-1 lead. Zimmerman steps in. Curveball is outside. Zimmerman. Junior second baseman, 1-0 count. That's inside, 2-0. Aaron Ernst was warming up in between innings. So he is warm if needed for Coach Wiss. There's a ground ball. Falk to short. Over to Holster at first base for the first out. Leadoff batter is always big, especially in a one-run game. Takes away a lot of the bunting plays. Gerardo, the catcher, steps in. Grounded out to short in the second inning. Ground down to second, he reached on an air in the fourth inning. First pitch, a pop fly, that's popped straight back. Strike one. Oh, and one, one on Gerardo. Curveball at his high. Nixon is senior. Four-year player on varsity for the Wildcats. Trying to get a, var a win here, district win here. This is on the second one, two and one. Wildcats looking for their first, trying to get a district championship for the first time since 2012. There's a pitch that's inside. So Gerardo has a three and one count against Nixon. Winding the pitch, a high chopper deep in the hole. Falk will try to throw it. He has no chance on that. That is an infield hit of Gerardo. Beat it into the ground. Falk was lucky to get to it. He had no chance on that play. So the fourth hit of the night for the Knights. 
Spencer Ralston up at the plate. Ralston's had one hit on the night. That ball is inside. Ralston had a base hit in the second inning. He ground out to third in the fourth inning. One for two in the night for the shortstop. There's a ground ball to Lemko. He'll have to go to first. Fires it over for the second out. The runner advances to second base. That was Lemko's only play. So he had to charge in, and the runner, Gerardo, had gone by him. So the runner in scoring position, a tying runner in scoring position, Painter to the plate. Painter one for two, grounded out to third, and then he had a base hit and scored in the fifth inning. So the tying run is on second base from Gerardo. Top of the sixth inning. Curveball outside. Nixon's throwing a lot of curveballs, probably about a 50 50 mixture between that and fastballs. Some change ups, probably. 1 0 here on Painter. There's a strike on the inside corner on a fastball. One and one. Gerardo reached with one out on an infield hit. He advanced in the ground ball to second by Ralston. And now Painter up with a 1-1 pitch against Nixon. Outside, nice block by Stubbs. Kept Gerard Gerardo at second base. Two and one, two and one. Nixon looks in to catch her stubs. Stretching the pitch. Little bit high, three and one. Of course, you have that. The Minster fans thought it was a strike. The Crestview fans said, oh, that was a ball. Pretty good crowd for both teams. Main stands are full. Three and one count here on Painter. Ground ball to Falk at short. Over to first for the third out. Crest few nights. Get a runner to second, but strand him at first. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. It's Wildcats 2, Knights 1 here on NK Toko Sports. Wegner's IGA have been servicing their communities for more than 90 years, spanning three generations. Wagner's founded their business on two basic principles, excellent customer service and quality products. Visit all our locations and experience the finest selection of deli, fresh meats, and a variety of beverage choices. While there, don't forget to check out our vast selection of fresh coffee beans, produce, dairy, and bakery items. Visit Wagner's today in Minster, Fort Larmy, and now New Bremen. There's a lot of early mornings that go into 40 years of service. A lot of miles on these tires and millions of pounds of cargo have traveled in these trailers. It's about dependable service. The kind of service that shows up 30 minutes early every time. That gets your products, cargo, and business from point A to point B safely, quickly, and efficiently. We are St. Mary's Trucking. Traveling the roads of commerce in Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Kentucky. Men and women who produce the solutions that make your business grow. Because the most important thing to them is you. Go to the bottom of the sixth inning here at Veterans Field, the district semifinal action. Wildcats lead 2-1 to one over Crestview. Along with our producer, Daniel Allen, his assistant, Phil Wiedenheff. On camera, Kyle Pranger, I'm Dave Kanapke. I think we're going to have some, some sort of a substitution as Coach Wiss was talking to the umpire in between innings. Wildcats scored two in the bottom of the fifth inning. Crestry responded with or two in the bottom of the fourth. Crestry scored with one in the top of the fifth. Been scoreless since then. Bottom of the order for the Wildcats, Isaac Schmeezing, Jared Hillsman, and Bryce Schmeezing up. In the sixth inning. Looks like there's no activity in the bullpen for the Wildcats. 
Derek Stout in his third inning of work here for the Knights. As Isaac Schmeezing steps into the box. Wildcats fans trying to rally the team. First pitch to Smeezing. Swing and a miss, strike one. Smeezing 200 on the season, 0 for 2 tonight. Or check that, 0 for 1. He grounded out in the second inning, and then he had a big sacrifice bunt in the fourth inning. One of those runners he bunted over scored for the sophomore third baseman. Stout with the wine. Curveball, that is outside. Stout in his third inning of work. He only had pitched seven varsity innings coming into tonight. Gave up two runs in the first inning. Didn't get a lot of help from his defense in that fourth inning. Gave up a couple runs, but probably pitched good enough to only allow maybe one run. One one pitch to Smeezy. That is high, almost hit Schmeezy. High and tight. So two and one. Wildcats bottom of the six. If you can add an insurance. Two and one on Schmeezy and on deck. Fellow sophomore Hillsman, and then Isaac's brother Bryce Schmeezing in the hole. Bottom of the order for Coach West doesn't necessarily mean bad batters. He likes to have some of his better batters at the bottom of the lineup to kind of build some people for the top of the order. Two and one pitch, and there's a soft ground ball to short. Schmeezing with good wheels. There's a throw, and he is safe. Isaac Schmeezing off the handle. Hit the ball, and as they said, he ran like heck, and he beats it out. His leadoff batter is on. Fortunate there, he hit it off the handle. Now we'll see what they do with Hillsman to the plate. Isaac Smeezy on first base, big insurance run. Hillsman will square around, bunts it down the first baseline. That will be foul. It is Richardson is back at first base for Crestview. As he re-enters, he had to leave suddenly. I'm not sure what it was last inning. Corolla was in there, but Richardson is now back at first base. Both of them lefty, so it's a little hard to tell at first. So Hillsman tried to bunt on the first one. He'll probably try on the second one. We'll see what happens here working against Stout. Squares around. Curveball, this time he goes down the third baseline, and that is foul. So Hillsman not able to get either one down. So we'll see what Coach Wiss does here. Usually, most of the times you have him swinging away. All depends how confident Coach Wiss is and Hillsman's ability to bunt. Also, how good he is as a hitter for the season. Hillsman 318 on the season. So not a bad average. Pitch, ooh, just outside, one and two. Where I'm sitting at is a little bit to the first base side, so I'm not directly behind it. Isaac Smeezing at first base, a one and two count on Hillsman. Bottom of the sixth inning, Wildcats up by one over the Knights. There's a shot down the first baseline. It's a base hit. Smeezing will come around to third. Hillsman will step at first, so a... Hillsman couldn't get the bunt down, but he strokes one down the right field line for a big hit. Runners on the corners, one out. And the Wildcats are in business here. Good opportunity here. Number nine hitter Bryce Schmeezing to the plate. 333 on the season, 0 for 2 tonight. A lot of options open here. You can steal good speed on the bases on both of these. You can do the first and third steal play. You can bunt. You can do a safety squeeze. A lot of options over. We'll see what they do. Stout will fake and look back to first. You see that play a lot. It doesn't seem to work a lot. Here's the pitch. And that will be a strike on the outside corner. 
on the fastball by Stout. Derek Stout, sophomore, in his third inning of work. Big opportunity for the Wildcats. Infield is back. So slow ground ball will score the runner from third base. Curveball is outside. Actually, kind of looked like a, I don't know if, it, I don't think it was a pitch out. The middle infielders are back. Second baseman Zimmerman is kind of in the shortstop is definitely back. The runners are on, the corners are in. And there's Hilson will take off and go to second base on the steal. Crestview lets him go, so now second and third. Crestview still now, it looks like they'll bring the runners in. They didn't want to bring them in completely with the steal of possible. Now the infield is in. Bryce Schmeezy. Pitch is high, three and one. Runners at second and third, nobody out. Isaac Schmeezing at third base. Jared Hilsman at second. Bryce Schmeezing up at the plate. Nobody out. Bottom of the sixth inning. That is outside. The bases are loaded for the leadoff batter, Peter Falk. Crestview had a couple pitchers warming up in between innings. We'll see if they make a change here or not. Ralston goes in to talk to Derek Stout. Bases are loaded, nobody out, but now you have the force play. Falk to the plate. He struck out his only appearance against Stout. Before that, he, he walked and he had a base hit. Infield in. Curveball hits the outside corner, strike one. Nice pitch there by the sophomore right-hander, Stout. Schmeezing at third, Hillsman at second. Schmeezing at first, nobody out. Bottom of the sixth inning. Stretch. Slow curveball again. Falk takes it again for strike two. Coach Wiss says we need some contact here, son. 0-2. Oh and two against Falk. Fouled off. Falk stays alive. On deck will be Brett Holscher. The big opportunity here for the Wildcats. Long look by Stout. O2 oh pitch to Falk. That is outside. A little low, a little outside. One and two. Into the count. Pitch to Falk. Strike three called. Falk fooled on the curveball again. So there's a big out for Crestview. Still the bases loaded, one out. Fred Holster to the plate. Holster has walked twice. He's popped up on a body temp. So he's 0 for 1 officially. Bases loaded, now one out. Curveball, strike one. Stout has had some big curveball pitches in his three innings of work. Middle it. There's a squeeze play there, and it, Holster able to just get a piece of it. So they do the squeeze play. Now two strikes. The infield is back. At the middle of the infield is a double play depth. The corners are in. So a slow ground ball to the middle can score one for sure. But now Holster in an 0-2 count against Stout. Stretch. He steps off. Shortstop's trying to make Hillsman work at second base. Holscher steps out, 0-2 again on Holscher. Try to suicide squeeze the last pitch. Strike three called. Two Wildcats in a row take strike three called. Now Josh Nixon to the plate. It was bases loaded, nobody out. It is now bases loaded. 
and two outs. And the senior Josh Nixon to the plate. The Wildcats don't score. This is a big momentum for Crestview. First pitch is a curveball. That is low. Stout got in trouble here, but he's had some big pitches against Falk and Holscher. Got a head on both. 1-0 pitch that is fouled off by Nixon. 1-1. One and one. Nixon trying to help himself here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Some big insurance runs on the bases, but now two outs, the infield back. We're going against Stout. There's a fly ball into center field, and that will end the inning. The Wildcats squander a big opportunity. Bases loaded, nobody out, not able to score. They have now stranded. Nine runners on the day. We go to the seventh inning. Still a one-run game. Wildcats two, Knights one here on NK Toco Sports. You owe it to yourself twice a year at checkup at Minster Dental Care. Our specialized doctors, Jim Overman, Jim Myring, Sean Sharp, and Philip Slonkowski are ready to give you the smile you've always dreamed of at any stage of your life. Pediatric, orthodontic, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry are just a few of the services offered. Our latest advancements include Seric Dentistry that allows us to create and deliver a crown in one convenient visit. We're located on State Route 66 in Minster, 419-628-3380 to schedule your appointment today. You owe it to yourself. NK Telco Sports, Ohio's leading sports broadcasting company, is dedicated to sports coverage, filming over 120 collegiate and high school sporting events that bring quality content and excellent sportsmanship to the big screen. Team up with us as an NK Telco sponsor and receive many benefits, commercials that will be seen by thousands of viewers, multiple name mentions, live web ads, monthly bill stuffers, and discounted network ad insertion spots. Packages are available for any budget. Contact us today. Wildcats do not score in the bottom of the sixth inning. We go to the seventh inning. They just need three more outs. They will face the eight, nine, and one batters, Richardson, Brio, and Miller. Richardson, who had to leave for an inning on the field, he didn't miss in that bat. As he is in here, 0 for 2 on the night. Two ground balls, one to first, one to third. And a one-run game, the leadoff batter is always huge. Senior Josh Nixon, it looks like it's his game here. First pitch, a strike. Strike one on deck is the designated hitter, Brio. Curveball, a little bit low. He checked his swing, one and one. Richardson, freshman, first baseman. There's a shot into right field that bounces in front of Niemeyer. Able to get over to it, but the leadoff batter is on. Richardson gets a base hit to right field. So the leadoff batter is on. Perfect bunny situation for Brio, he had a suicide squeeze earlier, so you got to figure the bunt is on here. Brio is number nine batter. The top of the order would be up after this. So Richardson on first. The leadoff single, top of the seventh. A one-run game. Nixon steps off, composes himself behind the mound. Third, second baseman will charge, and that will be fouled straight back. Play you don't see a lot. Usually you have the corners charge. That time they had the second baseman charge. And the first baseman can stay there and also hold the runner on. 0-1 on Brio. Richardson on first. Crestview down by one, top of the seventh inning. That pitch is high. One and one. On deck will be the leadoff batter, Jordan Miller. Good ball game here in this district semifinal.
There's the squares around the bunt. Is on the right side. Nixon will get it. Will tag him out. Throws back to second. Ball in the dirt. Falk Navy able to dig it out. If he if he catches that or the throws better, he probably had him picked off. The bunt goes unassisted. One unassisted on the sacrifice. Again, Nixon got him, tagged him out, threw behind the runner, was already making the turn at second. Falk was there. The ball was in the dirt. Falk Navy able to catch it. That could have been a big out. But Miller to the plate. Runner at scoring position, the tying run at second. Miller, the second center fielder, one of two seniors in this lineup. First pitch, a curveball hangs high. Miller is grounded out to Nixon twice, and then he walked in the fifth inning. Richardson at second. One out. Crestview down by one. There's a wild pitch. It gets by Nixon. He throws to the third, but he is at third base now. That was a fastball that just smoked past Stubbs. So Coach Wiss out to the mound here. Talking to Nixon. Talk to his infield. Wildcats still have the lead, but now the tying run just 90 feet away. And Crest is never afraid to bunt. You could have the suicide squeeze here. Miller just has to get the ball on the bat on the ball. Slow ground ball could get the runner in. I don't know what Richardson's speed is on third base. He's a first baseman. Generally, first basemen aren't super fast. Again, this is high school. It changes everything here. Coach Woods trying to settle down. His pitcher, Nixon. So he looks like we're going to have a pitcher, pinch hitter on deck. Stout is on deck. He would be the pitcher. So the meeting completes. Again, Richardson on first base. He got a base hit to right to start it. He was sacrificed over. Advances on the wild pitch to third base. Miller at the plate. 2-0. and oh. Infield is in. Trying to keep that one-run lead. Nixon with the stretch. Pitch, there's a strike on the outside corner. Nice fastball, low and outside. Two and one. On deck is a pinch hitter for the pitcher, Stout. This is a see right here with the runner on third with one out. Low, three and one. Do not want to walk the batter. That puts worse first and third. That adds more situations. Three and one on Miller. Nixon looks in. It's a stretch in the pitch. Ground ball to Schmees in at third. Goes back and almost tags him. Schmees, he knocks it down. Dove back to third on a bang, bang play. The umpire was right there. Said the runner was safe. So there's a fielder's choice. Miller is safe at first base. So now first and third, Schmeezing, just a reaction play. He, Richardson was pretty far off there. Schmeezing dove off there. So now first and third, one out. We will check who is going to be the pinch hitter here. Dylan Hicks. Dylan Hicks, the batter. First and third, one out. Hicks is up. He's a junior. Runners at the corner, one out. So first and third, you have the steal situation. We'll see what happens here with one out. Hicks, your batter. 
First pitch from Nixon, that is high and tight. Kicks, we don't have any hitting stats on him, so 1-0. and Nixon with the pitch, curveball, that is, goes for a strike. Nice curveball, throws Hicks. Last play was a good play by Spinney's and he backhanded, the runner was right there. Good play, a knock it down, but not able to get the out at third. Heads up base running there by Richardson to stay back. Nixon will talk to Stubbs, make sure they are on the same page. Miller is on first base. He would give you the go-ahead run. Richardson on first, third base. He is the tying run with one out here in the top of the seventh inning. Hicks, your batter, pinch hitting for the pitcher, Stout. Stretch. Pitch. That is low, two and one. First and third, one out. The Wildcats clinging to a one-run lead. Here's the pitch. Curveball, swing and a miss. Nice pitch by Nixon. Levels the count at two and one. The infield is in on the corners. The middle infield is playing for the double play. So ground ball to the middle. A run will probably score unless it's a double play. Two and two. Hicks against Nixon. Swing and a miss. A big strike out there by Nixon. Struck out Hicks. So now two outs down to the last out. And their third place hitter, third baseman, Hurlis. He's 0 for 3. He had a ground ball to third. Had a line shot to center field. He popped out a high pop up to shortstop. Down to the last out. Hurlis against Nixon. Two outs. Top of the seventh inning. Nixon steps off. First and third. Richardson led off with an infield hit. He was sacrificed over. Advancing a right pitch to third base. Here's the first pitch to Hurlis. Curveball, nice block by Stubbs. Richardson advanced to third on a wild pitch. Miller hit a ground ball to third. Smeezing on a diving stop. Tried to get a runner at third. Nobody got nobody out. Now a strikeout. Here's a pitch in and tight. Two balls, no strikes on Hurlis. 2-0 and oh on deck is Simmerman. Zach Simmerman, the second baseman. Right now, third baseman, Caden Hurlis. Pitch, strike. Fastball there by Nixon with a lot of heat. Big pitch here. Every one of these pitches big. Two to one. Tying run on third base. Hurlis, the number three batter, is up. Pitch. Ground ball. Just smeezing. He will throw to the first base and makes the play. Tough play there by the third baseman, Isaac Smeezing. Right on the line. Made a tough play, and he guns down the runner at third base. The Minster Wildcats advance, and they get out of a big threat in the seventh inning. They advance to the district final. Your final on the first National Bank scoreboard. It's Minster 2, Crestview 1. We'll take a break. We'll be back to wrap it up here on NK Toco Sports. Innovation, it's all around us. NK Telco developed a fiber network in our communities over 10 years ago when the competitors were only thinking about it. Increasing bandwidth to make it convenient for the whole family to enjoy online entertainment and gaming. With our IPTV solution, you can enjoy over 80 HD channels providing quality TV and movies for the whole family and even take them on the go with our Watch TV Everywhere app. All this from a company that believes in local customer service from people you know and trust. NK Telco, providing services that bring value to your everyday life. Hello? Anybody home? This bed's too soft. This bed's too hard. That one 
It's from Francis Furniture. I like it. Find your just right at Francis Furniture. Here at TLC, we expanded our business, so we wanted the security of knowing exactly where all the kids are and what's going on in each of the rooms. We chose Fowler's because we've done all our televisions with them and they mentioned they have security systems. So we just wanted to go out and look at it and they were very upfront and they do excellent work from start to finish. And so we chose Fowler's TV. It's been great for us here at TLC Learning Center and in Fowler's TV would be great for anyone. Is it time to upgrade your inefficient system? Then let New Knoxville Supply install new water furnace geothermal. Calculate your savings and see how you can save up to 70% on your heating, cooling, and hot water costs. Save even more with the 30% renewable tax credit. Water furnace geothermal from New Knoxville Supply offers the safest, cleanest, and most efficient means to heat and cool your home. Call us for a free estimate and be sure to ask us about the Water Furnace Symphony app. It's all at NewKnoxvilleSupply.com. The Minster Wildcats advance in this district semifinal, a thriller over Crestview 2-1. to one. Winning pitcher tonight was Josh Nixon. His record goes now to 4-3 and three on the season. Losing pitcher is Derek Stout in a tough decision. He had to come in for Colby Clifton in the, third, in the fourth inning, the, who was the starter who was hurt. And he came in, gave up two runs. It was a scoreless game in the fourth inning. Scoreless run in the fourth inning and stout on in relief of her, or of a Clifton who had been injured on running to first base. He was greeted in the fourth inning by John Niemer. I had a big base hit to lead it off. Alex Lemko ended up driving him in. Lemko ended up scoring on a sacrifice fly by Jared Hilsman. That was the two runs. Crestview scored in the top of the fifth inning. They scored one run. Jacob Painter uh, with the run with the big run there uh, to make it 2-1. to one. And then at the bottom of the sixth inning, the Wildcats had bases loaded. Nobody out did not score. Crestview had the tying run at third base with one out. They ended up having first and third with one out. Did not score. A big strikeout and a big play at third base by Isaac Smeezing to get the win for the Wildcats. 2-1 to one on our first National Bank scoreboard. Player of the game, we will give it to John Niemeyer for Minster. He had two hits on the night for the Wildcats. He scored the first run of the night again for the junior right fielder John Niemeyer with the player of the game we'd like to thank Subway for sponsoring our player game so Mince Crestview ends their season at 13 and 8 on the season Minster goes to 18 and 9 on the season they advance to the district final they will play Fort Recovery on Saturday afternoon so good luck to the Wildcats good luck to all the team area teams still left in the tournament Final score once again, Minster 2, Crestview 1. You've been watching high school baseball, tournament baseball here on NK Telco Sports for our producer, Daniel Allen, his assistant, Phil Wiedenhaf, our camera, Kyle Pranger, I'm Dave Kanapke. Thanks for watching.